Hello there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Recently, one of our fans, uh, Lachlan Hellenius, sorry if I mispronounced your very epic name, suggested that we do a video covering the earlier portions of Palpatine's life. This is an awesome idea because I think uh, a lot of fans are not familiar with this portion of Darth Sidious's uh, very long, long career. If you guys have an awesome Star Wars video idea, please follow us on Facebook and send us a message. Now, I'm not going to reply to every message, but I will try to read every one of them. We're getting a lot of them, obviously. Sheev Palpatine was born on Naboo and raised in his family's ancestral home of Convergence. This was located in Naboo's lake country, you know, the bougie area where Anakin and Padme go to in episode two for a bit of R&R. Palpatine was an extremely ambitious individual who also happened to be intelligent. Unfortunately, he lacked empathy and compassion completely. A side of his personality that he would one day learn to mask and control because it was a liability in the political arena. But at least when he was younger, this darker side would manifest itself and it would scare, you know, his fellow students and teachers. And he got kicked out of several prestigious academies and institutions. Luckily, his father, Kinsinga, had a lot of money and would basically pay off officials uh, and even law enforcement with bribes so that he wouldn't go to jail because Palpatine really deserved to go to jail, especially after he killed two innocent people in a speeder accident because he loves driving very fast. It was this lack of consequences that further helped enforce Palpatine's perception that he was superior and above the law. From a young age, Palpatine was very interested in Sith artifacts and Sith lore, and so he would steal money from his wealthy parents and go to the black market and find any ancient text that he could get his hands on. He would devour Sith texts and came to a conclusion pretty early on that it was absolute power that he desired above all else. His first thirst for real political power was realized in his own family's decline in political power. Palpatine really despised his father, Kinsinga Palpatine, because he was kind of this incompetent individual who was born into luxury and wealth and didn't realize that he was incompetent. Palpatine believed that Naboo had the potential to become a powerful and important planet in the mid-rim, but progress so far had been limited by closed-minded traditionals like his father, who would rather keep Naboo isolated from the global economy and financial interests. In 65 BBY, during the election for the monarch, his father, Kinsinga, would actually support the opposition for Bon Topolo. Bontopolo's platform was based on bringing Naboo closer to the Republic and lifting protectionist policies that kept Naboo economically isolated. In an act of rebellion, Chief Palpatine would actually spy on his father and other opposition leaders and feed that information directly to Bontopolo's campaign. This action would attract the attention of another individual who was interested in Naboo local politics, a powerful lobbyist known as Higo Damask, whose true identity was Darth Plagueis, a dark lord of the Sith, who just recently had killed his own master and was now in the market for an apprentice of his own. As Higo Damas, the chairman of the lobby known as Damask Holdings, Plagueis was interested in developing the newly found plasma reserves underneath Naboo's capital, Othid. Naboo lacked the resources and know-how to basically develop the infrastructure for uh, exploiting these resources and then exporting it to other uh, planets. What they really needed was outside investors and companies to help them out. This also meant a change in policy and relaxing strict Nabu regulations on allowing four megacorps to operate on their soil. Darth Plagueis ultimately saw potential in young Palpatine for helping out the Topolo campaign and hired him as a spy who would assist any further political action on Nabu. All was well until Kinsinga Palpatine realized that his own son was betraying his political moves. So he would travel to Chandrilla, where Palpatine was going on a school trip, and basically confront him about this. Palpatine asks Darth Plagueis for advice on what to do, and the Sith Lord tells him he must do whatever it takes to secure his freedom from his father. And so in a fit of rage, Palpatine not only kills his father, he also kills his entire family along with the few security guards that were unlucky enough to be in the room at the time. Heodamus would use his vast resources to cover up this massacre, and Palpatine would return home to Naboo completely innocent. He would sell his ancestral home of Convergence and then settle in a nice little apartment in the royal city of Theed. Darth Plagueis had been intrigued with Palpatine since their first meeting. For one, Palpatine was completely blank in the Force, an ability that the young man had developed naturally and would one day become very important when he would become the Chancellor. 
Palpatine had also demonstrated a ruthlessness and a hunger for power that was worthy of a Sith Lord. The murder of his father was kind of initiation test for Palpatine, and he had passed it with flying colors. I mean, he killed the rest of his family for no reason. And so Darth Plagueis proclaims that Palpatine is his new apprentice, Darth Sidious. And so Plagueis began training the young man in the ways of the Sith. This included a complete destruction of whatever humanity was left inside of Palpatine. A lack of humanity is also one of the key attributes that all career politicians must have in order to survive. Darth Plagueis and the Sith had an ambitious plan that dated back to Darth Bane and the creation of the Rule of Two. This grand plan was a multi-pronged strategy that involved a more subtle takeover of the galaxy. In the past, the Sith have tried on multiple occasions to destroy the Jedi in open warfare, either with their own forces or with proxies. However, the Sith never had the same numbers as the Jedi and their supporters, and they were usually always defeated. The new grand plan involved using the Republic's democratic systems to basically seize power from within. Darth Sidious, being a charismatic human from a noble Naboo house, was the perfect agent who would carry out the Sith's plan from within the Senate. The other part of the grand plan was to create instability, mainly in the Adarim territories, using Damask Holdings' massive wealth. This instability hopefully would lead to calls for a stronger central government, and as an added bonus, it could also potentially lead to many Jedi deaths. And so Palpatine would serve five years in the Apprentice Legislator Program and then be promoted to become one of the uh, main diplomats in Naboo Senator Vidar Kim's retinue. Vidar Kim was opposed to Bon Topolo's deal with the Trade Federation to exploit Naboo Plasma, and therefore he was a roadblock in the Sith's plans. Shortly after Palpatine joins him, Vidar Kim's family is killed mysteriously in a land speeder accident. An accident that Vidar Kim believes that Bon Topolo has orchestrated. Senator Kim began to act irrational and unpredictable, which prompts Darth Plagueis to ask Palpatine to basically kill him. It was already a foregone conclusion that Palpatine would take over Vidar Kim's uh, role once he basically stepped down. And so in 52 BBY, the 30-year-old Palpatine would become the secretarial senator that represented Naboo and 35 other worlds in the Kamal sector. It was a minor position from a less important part of the galaxy. Palpatine knew that more powerful senators generally ignored or looked down at seats like his. Now, as a junior senator, any attempt to skip the line and pursue power would be treated with suspicion and probably make Palpatine more enemies. And so Palpatine did the one thing that no one expected a senator to do. He actually worked hard trying to push forward meaningful policies and agendas. He avoided appointments to powerful committees and advisory boards, and he basically avoided any kind of shortcut possible. This really made him a kind of likable individual within the Senate. It was a simple tactic, but he chose to look deserving of a promotion instead of actually openly pursuing power. This made him seem like less of a threat to his colleagues, and so the public and his colleagues in the Senate began viewing Palpatine as a true servant of the Republic and a model senator, hated by no one and liked by all. At the same time, Palpatine liked to write and get his thoughts out there into academia or the media. Soon, his philosophy on power and military's role in society were being read all over the galaxy. More importantly, Palpatine's message was usually nonpartisan and populist in nature. He rarely took hard stances on anything and tried not to offend anyone. And so while the elite in the Senate continued to fight amongst each other, Palpatine more or less remained unscathed and his popularity was slowly growing. Palpatine would find allies and friends not only in the Senate, but also in a variety of other government offices, including the Judicial Department and even the Jedi Order. Amongst his very powerful friends was Chancellor Finnis Valorum, a well-meaning and compassionate individual who was a little bit overwhelmed by all the chaos going on in the Republic. While Palpatine the Senator would help Valorum get elected to a second term, Darth Sidious, the Sith Lord, worked secretly behind the scenes to undermine him at every turn. By the time the Trade Federation invaded Naboo, there are already talks that Finnis Valorum's days were numbered and that Palpatine would be a terrific replacement. So as you can see, Palpatine slowly worked in the shadows. He was extremely patient. He tried not to offend anyone. And basically he was able to ascend to the top when the moment was right. Anyway guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about Darth Sidious and his kind of career. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.